Hello, I'm Li Jing. In the previous RDM Bytes on Fair Plus Verification, I've introduced the verification process. Today, I'll continue to talk about its tools and templates. In this video, you will learn about the Fair Plus Verification template, outlining potential experts to consider when verifying a dataset. Additionally, the video covers the verification work plan which provides a structure for organizing FAIR implementation work. Recall the graphical overview of the verification framework. We have learned the verification process in a previous video, and that the cycle phase of the process involved the majority of the work. Today, we will introduce the other two components of the framework, which have been designed for facilitating this phase. Let's start with the verification templates. The templates implement the verification process by providing a set of clear and distinct steps for the implementation stage in the cycle phase of the process. The template consists of eight steps relating to data hosting, marked in pink boxes, as well as data representation and format, marked in blue boxes and to data contents marked in purple boxes. I will provide a detailed explanation of how each step is broken down into one or more sub-steps. Step one of the process is to acquire the data. This step involves gaining access to the underlying data set through either a restricted or an open access API and documenting information on querying the data via the API. Step two involves modeling the domain. In this stage, the data types within the data set are identified. Additionally, the community or domain standard for representing the data are documented to ensure alignment with the verification work along those lines, if applicable. Step three, is to select the identifier scheme. In this step, an identifier is created to uniquely identify the data set. This can be accomplished by either generating new identifiers or reusing existing ones. In cases where a solution is required to produce new identifiers, identifier minting services can be used. For additional information on the identifier minting service, please refer to the link provided in the video description. Step four, apply data standards. In, at this step, data standard validation and identification is done to ensure the representation of the data is in community or domain specified format for interoperability purposes. Step five, Choose data vocabularies. At this step, you will look in depth about data content and harmonize it with ontologies, either existing ones or create an application ontology tailored to your specific use case. Step six is to transform data for interoperability. You should not only represent the data in a single ontology, but also established links and mappings to corresponding ontologies. This ensures that the data achieves interoperability with multiple vocabularies and terminologies rather than being confined to just one. Step seven is to host your data. After preparing the data set, it is essential to establish a hosting and implement search engine optimization inputs for it. In addition to hosting, data versioning and data formats must also be considered. The final step is to share your data. Now that the data set is verified, one can share this data to community with licensing. In case of dealing with sensitive data, data anonymization should be considered prior to sharing.
We will now introduce another tool for verification, that is Verification Web Plan. This web plan layout provides a structure for organizing fair implementation work tailored to the needs of a specific project. The Verification Web Plan is a customized design and implementation plan developed for a particular project, incorporating the established goals from Phase 1 and identified requirements from Phase 2 of the verification process. Relevant elements from the verification template are chosen and translated into actionable tasks. These tasks are then completed within the designated cycle time frame in accordance with the verification process. The web plan is structured into five sections, aligning with the overarching structure of the verification process. Section one outlines the goals in the top left corner, while the project examination outcomes are details in section two at the top middle part. The result of the pre-verification assessment are recorded in section three on the top right. The central element of the work plan are found in section four, which is design decisions in the middle row, and section five, which is implementation at the bottom row. Section four lists the specific steps from the verification template that will be addressed in this verification cycle and refines them into more concrete steps relevant for this context. In section five, these concrete steps are broken down into clear, implementable tasks, which are recorded in color-coded boxes to track progress from to do to done. After completing a verification cycle, the outcomes of the post-verification assessment are recorded in section six, located at the bottom right corner. If more than one verification cycle is performed, a new version of the work plan should be produced for each cycle, in particular if there are changes in sections four and five. Till now, we have gone through the three main components of the verification framework, the process, template, and work plan. The cycle phase of the verification process involves the majority of the work, and we have learned tools and templates for this phase. In the next audio bite, I will demonstrate the verification process using an IMI project called CARE and show you how the framework can be practically applied in a task. Thanks for watching. Please see links used as well as links to additional resources alongside this video.